Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about fundamentally two different types of circuits, so series circuits and parallel circuits. And I'm going to be teaching a lot of this by analogy. That means I'm going to explain using concepts that you're familiar with and apply that to something that's a little bit harder to grasp. So the first analogy I want to introduce is I want you to think about a mountainside that has different types of waterfall systems. So on the left, you can see that there is a mountainside with three different waterfalls in series. That means there is one right after another. And this waterfall system is going to represent a series circuit where the current flows down one right after another after another drop right here. As it drops down it loses energy. If we had some sort of water wheel attached here we could use some of that energy of the falling water but definitely there's energy being lost as it drops down. Gravitational potential energy as this water drops down. Now this is a fundamentally different system over here. This is a system where you imagine a like a mountain lake system or a glacier let's say and it's got three different pathways for the water to flow so maybe this pathway over here has extra rocks this pathway has the least amount of rocks and so I want you to start thinking already about which pathway is gonna have the most current flowing the one with the most amount of rocks or the one with the least amount of rocks we're going to be talking about that by analogy and then applying that analogy to electrical circuits. So this will be our representation of a parallel circuit. All right, and thinking about a series circuit, so we've got a symbol here inside a circuit diagram of a resistor. This one's a little bit longer. These are more short and reasonable symbols of resistors over here. Just a reminder, we use circuit diagrams because it's a lot easier to use symbols than it is to draw the actual objects. And so we've got symbols for all of these things. This represents a battery or a power source, and these are resistors. Now resistors are important because they impede the flow of charge, but they could also be devices that use energy, like a light bulb or an electrical appliance or something like that. A resistor is really actually quite important as a concept and in our everyday life. Now if we have a very simple circuit where there's only one pathway for the charges to flow, then that is called a series circuit and to be able to come up with the equivalence resistance, meaning the overall resistance for this entire circuit or this part of the circuit right here, all you're going to do is add up the individual resistances from each of the resistors. All right, so if we wanted to solve for, say, the current in the series circuit, we would start with Ohm's law. And I will say Ohm's law is something we're going to be using throughout our work in circuits. So just get used to using Ohm's law and have it handy in your minds. You're going to go ahead and think, all right, well, we're going to change this R value. If we're talking about the entire circuit and it's a series circuit, then we need to think about what our equivalent resistance is going to be. And if we're solving for I, let's go ahead and isolate for I. Then we can go ahead and plug in our numbers and we end up with the equivalent resistance being the sum of all of the individual resistors in that circuit or that part of the circuit. We go ahead and solve and we end up with a current of 1.0 amps. We will compare that to a similar circuit but which is set up in parallel. So let's go ahead and see what we'll need to do to come up with the equivalent resistance in parallel. All right, so if we are working with a parallel circuit now, or a section of a circuit, that means there are multiple pathways for the electrons or the charge to flow through. Now, a little confusing thing that I'll mention, remember, what's actually happening is these electrons are the charge carriers for most circuits as they go around from the negative side of the power source to the positive side of the power source. This circuit has three different pathways for that to happen, and that's what I would call actual current. But what is called conventional current is the idea that positive charges are flowing around from the positive side of the battery or power source to the negative side of the power source. That's actually not what's happening, but that's called current or conventional current. And the reason for that is because most things in electricity and circuits are assumed to be working with a positively charged object. So that's why this current is talked about in a false way. All of this works whether the current flows in this direction or in this direction. It more or less is going to work the same. So it'll be okay either way. Let's take a look at our equation over here. It's going to be different for a parallel circuit than it was for a series circuit. So if you look at this equation right here, you've got 1 over your equivalent parallel resistance. 
is equal to 1 over the resistance for the first resistor plus the second plus the third. You just essentially add up all of the ones that you have here. So if you have five, you would add up five of these. If you have two, you're going to work with two. All right, so we go ahead and plug in our numbers here, and we end up with this. I'm going to label this as equation one. Notice I've converted my fractions into decimals, and we'll continue on the next page with the same equation labeled as one. And this is the problem. This is where a lot of students, when they're first learning how to do this, will stop. They'll say, oh, the equivalent parallel resistance for this system would be 1.08 ohms. That's not correct. It's actually the inverse of that. So we still need to take the inverse of that. And we end up with the equivalent parallel resistance of being 0 0.93 ohms. All right, and the next thing I want to mention is that if we compare our equivalent resistance with the series, what we did before, and what we got now, remember if we just added them up, we got way higher resistance when this circuit is wired up in series, so to speak, and we get much less resistance if we wire this up in parallel. So before we had 9 ohms of resistance, now we have 0.93 huge difference between those two numbers. So we can generalize this with a statement and say that the equivalent resistance is much less in a parallel circuit, all things being equal, than a series circuit. All right, well, what if we want the current for the entire parallel circuit? Once we have the equivalent parallel resistance, we can go ahead and isolate for our parallel current and plug in our numbers and solve for unknown. So we end up with 9.7 amps over here. All right, well, let's expand our analogy and think a little bit more deeply about our analogy of a waterfall with rapids as an analogy for potential difference. So potential difference is also sometimes called potential drop. It's like gravitational potential difference of a waterfall with rapids. In other words, you have a certain amount of potential energy of some water up here, and you have less down here. It's lost potential energies that drops from this higher position to the lower position. And if we say it's potential energy divided by mass, well, that's something that we could call gravitational potential, just like electric potential, but a gravitational version. And if we find the difference between its initial position and its final position, then we have something called gravitational potential difference. All right, so what do you mean? I mean, specifically, this is our definition of potential difference and gravitational potential difference would be something like this, the change in potential energy divided by the mass of the thing that's experiencing it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. In my opinion, this is the hardest concept to truly understand in all of high school physics. I have done a screencast on that if you're having trouble with potential difference and remembering what that is or understanding what that is, please take a look at the link in the upper right. All right, well, let's think about what we had built on so far. I do want you to imagine for a moment that we have this system right here. This represents a parallel circuit. And it turns out that the current doesn't necessarily need to be the same in all three, right? In fact, if this has the most amount of resistance represented by the greatest amount of rocks, and this has the least amount of resistance represented by the least amount of rocks, then which pathway, the left pathway or the right pathway, is going to have the greatest currents? What do you think? Well, the greatest current's going to be the one with the least resistance, right? Conceptually, that makes sense. The water flows more quickly through here than it does through here if it's harder for it to get through. And that's exactly true for circuits as well. So we're going to say parallel circuits have different amounts of current flowing through them, but their potential difference is the same for all the resistors. What does that mean? Well, if this represents the potential difference, think about it, it's going to have the same potential difference from this starting location to this ending location over here. So you have the same potential difference or potential drop for all three pathways for a parallel circuit. That's actually really important. And we're going to come back to that throughout this unit. All right. Well, next up, I do want to point out a couple of things. If you had a series system like this set up, their potential drops across each of these resistors would not necessarily have to be the same. In other words, maybe this is a three foot drop and this is a four foot drop and this is a five foot drop. There's nothing saying they have to have the same drop across each of these resistors. So it's true that the potential drop in series is not necessarily equal to each other. They could be, they could be equal to each other if they just so happen to have the same drop, right? 
if the potential drop is going to be not the same necessarily, is there anything that's the same? And the answer is yeah, the current is actually the same. It's only got one pathway to go through. These charge carriers repel each other as they go, so they all kind of march forward at the same rates. So that's how I want you to think of them. This is where the analogy isn't as helpful, but we're going to say these charge carriers all move at the same rate because they all repel each other. All right, well, let's think about if we're going to solve for the current for resistors in parallel, let's think about what we would have to do. So what is the current flowing through each of the resistors in parallel? What you're going to have to do is isolate using Ohm's law, starting with Ohm's law, isolate for this and realize or recognize that the potential drop for all three of these is going to be exactly the same. So it's nine volts that drop across this resistor, this resistor here, and this resistor here as well. So we can go ahead and just plug in our numbers Assuming that this is 9 volts for the first resistor, it's got 2 ohms, you end up with 4.5 amps. Across the second resistor, you've got the same potential drop over here, and so you have a different current flowing through. Notice that this has a higher resistance, so it's going to have a lower current. It's like saying there are more rocks here, and so less water flows through per second. All right, and the last example we have over here has the same potential drop, but a different resistance, and as a result, a different amount of current. If we took these three, they should add up to the total for the entire circuit. All right, and at this point, let's go ahead and summarize. To solve for the equivalent resistance for resistors that are in series, you just add up all of the individual resistances for the individual resistors. And if they're in parallel, you're going to use this equation here. And to summarize over here for a series circuit, the potential difference is going to be different or at least not necessarily the same for all resistors that are in series. And the current is going to be the same. So think about water flowing down the mountain. It's going to flow down at basically the same rate if you have a mountainside with three drops. It'll be more or less the same as it goes down. Now over here for the parallel situation, the drop is going to be the same for all the resistors in parallel. Another word for the drop is the potential difference is going to be the same for all the resistors in parallel, but the current is going to be different for all the resistors in parallel. The resistor with the least amount of resistance measured in ohms is going to have the greatest amount of current and vice versa. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, let me know. Take care and have a great day.